Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome, welcome to this episode of Jim's 5am Club. Today what we're going to do is we're going to go through a book entitled How Children Learn by an author named John Holt and this book was published on the 8th of July 2014 so it's about 10 years old but the messages and the lessons from this book will be timeless so have some patience stick with it and we'll see what we can learn so the author goes through and starts by saying that children don't need to be motivated to learn they need to be allowed to learn what a concept that is because learning is natural for children Holt asserts that learning is an inherent part of being human just like breathing just like walking just like seeing all of those things it's just natural and children are naturally curious and eager to learn and this intrinsic motivation should be nurtured rather than stifled by rigid educational systems the author then goes on to talk about something that we all know but sometimes we forget that children love to play and the importance of play needs to be acknowledged, respected and supported. The author emphasises that play is a crucial component of learning because through play children explore their environment, develop social skills and engage in problem solving, making it an essential aspect of their educational experience and educational journey. Through observation and experience, Holt highlights the significance of observation in the learning process. Children learn best through direct experiences and interactions with their surroundings rather than through passive instruction. This hands-on approach fosters deeper understanding. We must also acknowledge and respect that there are individual learning styles and each child is different from other children and from their siblings as well. Every child learns differently and Holt encourages educators and parents to recognise and respect these individual learning styles that vary from family to family, from child to child. Tailoring learning experiences to fit a child's unique way of processing information can enhance their educational journey in a beautiful and productive way. Emotional connection to learning. This book delves into and discusses the role of emotions in learning. Children are more likely to engage with material that resonates with them emotionally. This is very important and something that we need to uh, grab with both hands, 10 fingers and hug it close to our chest to understand that emotion is an important part of the educational journey for children. And we need to create a supportive and emotionally safe environment 
because this can significantly enhance their ability to learn, retain and to enjoy the process. The role of curiosity, once again, is key and Holt stresses that curiosity is a powerful, a powerful driver of learning. Encouraging children to ask questions and explore their interests fosters a love of learning that can last a lifetime. This curiosity should be celebrated and cultivated. And the last key point that comes from this book, this wonderful book and this author, is that we need in some way to, to critique the traditional education methodologies. Holt critiques traditional education practices that prioritise rote memorisation and standardised testing over meaningful learning experiences. He advocates for educational approaches that prioritise understanding, creativity and critical thinking. These lessons provide valuable insights for parents, educators and anyone interested in fostering a more effective and compassionate approach to education that aligns with children's natural learning processes. It's only when you become a parent that you realise that children are different, they've got different learning styles and we need to tailor our parenting style and our approaches to meet the child's needs and for that reason there needs to be options for parents to be able to send their children to the type of schools that help facilitate and develop the unique needs of a particular child. I was very fortunate that I had some very good parents. I was an only child and it was easier for them to be able to work and to afford a private school education for me. I went to one of Sydney's best schools, a private school, a GPS school named Newington College, a school renowned for single sex boys education. And I've got to admit, I've got to admit that I was shocked last year on the 20th of November when the school council for some unknown reason voted unanimously to change the school, a school that was known as a boys school for 161 years, to change it to a co-educational format introducing girls. And the thing that really insulted me was the fact that the school, whilst it quotes that it's creating options and opportunities, is actually cancelling all of those male students, all of those boys, those future boys and those families who value single sex education. And no one from now on will be able to send from 2028 their boy, their son, to a single sex Newington College, taking away that choice. Where do you send your boys when there are two less schools, Newington and Cranbrook, that no longer support single sex education for boys? Anyway, take care, God bless, and we'll chat again. Bye for now.